Hey guys, what's up? So I know it's been longer than 11 days since I did my test from Check My Body Health or Check Your Body Health. Um, I've just been super busy, but I did get my res I did get my results back right away, like they said I would. And I'm so sorry I didn't update sooner, but I've been busy. It's my busy season. I know I feel like I'm always saying I'm busy. It's because I am, but I did get my results, and so I'm finally gonna go over them with you. Little background. I'm always the laughing joke of people always say I'm allergic to everything because most things I eat I have a problem with. Either I break out um, in rashes, in hives, in eczema, the inside of my mouth itches, my lips swell up, my ears itch, my throat, like literally something always seems to be wrong with me. I've got an allergy test from my regular doctor. The tests that they do are usually very basic, like um, they test you for things like, are you allergic to animals, like cats, dogs, mold, um, dust mites, uh, nuts, like certain nuts, like walnuts, uh, tree nuts, trees, pollen, that sort of thing. They don't usually test for um, specific things, so to speak, like oranges or, um, you know, different fruits or... Um, I don't know, just things that you could be allergic to that you just don't know. They just basically test for the common allergy. That being said, I've literally been to the doctor for the past, I want to say at least three to five years, constantly always having issues and not understanding what's wrong. I've been to the ears, nose, and throat doctor. I've been to the dermatologist. I've been to my regular doctor. Um, yeah, and there's always no answer. They just give me a bunch of creams, a bunch of pills, like take this for your allergies, take this and rub this here. And it still doesn't work and it's just been stressing me out so much. So I was on Groupon one day, I saw this thing called Check Your Body Health. I believe it's Check Your Body Health. Um, I'll put the link in the um, description down below. And so it did say that it could check for different things. There's different tiers. I got the highest tier, which is $199 which literally tests for everything. And um, I didn't pay $199 though because it was on Groupon. And so I believe I got it for like $36, um, which was great. So always check Groupon before you order anything because you might get a better deal. Now, I did do some research on it and a lot of um, the research I did said that doctors don't approve of this test. But when I brought it to my doctor's attention, he totally was like, you should totally do this because you really want to know what's wrong with you and clearly we haven't figured it out so he said he understands why doctors would say that because obviously it takes away from them um getting money from you to figure out what's wrong with you now this test technically is not an allergy test it is a um i forget what you call it but basically it's a reaction test to see if your body reacts to certain things whether it be food or um it was most it was mainly food and like metals and things like that so that being said, an allergy and a reaction are two different things. It did say that if you know you're allergic to something, but it doesn't come up as a reaction on this test, that does not mean you're not allergic to it. It just means that you might be allergic, but your body's not reacting to it. They said if your body comes up reacting to something on this test, it doesn't mean you're allergic to it and vice versa. So that being said, it's also not FDA approved. So I think that has something to do with it because of course the government is weird and they don't want us to know things that can help us. So I decided to take the test and I got my results and let me tell you, like all those times people make fun of me saying you're allergic to everything has made me realize I'm allergic to everything. Like literally I'm looking at this test like what the heck is wrong with me? No wonder why I'm always having these problems. And on top of having all those um, issues with the rashes and the eczema and the itching and the, you know, all of that. I also have a lot of gut issues, like my stomach gut. And so I've been noticing, I want to say maybe for the past, I don't know if it's been quite a year yet, but it's definitely been at least six months for sure. I have issues just eating, period. Like literally I eat, I have to go to the bathroom within an hour. I don't know why. It could be anything like breads, meats, fruits, vegetables, like literally anything it could be. I just have to go to the bathroom. So it's come to a point where if I know I'm going somewhere, Disneyland, a party, whatever, either I won't eat or I'll just drink Pepto-Bismol just to make sure that I don't have to go to the bathroom and have these issues going on with my stomach which has been working for me, but it's very bad to take Pepto-Bismol all the time, especially when you don't need it because clearly there's something else going on and it's like not something I need Pepto-Bismol for, but it's helping my symptoms. And um, it also is not good for you because Pepto-Bismol makes you constipated and 
that's just a whole other issue. So got my results. Actually got these about two, three weeks ago, I believe. Uh, yeah, about two, three weeks ago. And now I'm feeling a, a lot better. So I'm about to read you my results, guys. It might be quite long. I'm sorry if this is not something that you want to listen to. You totally don't have to watch this. But my results are literally 53 pages long. <laughs> That's how long it is. So let me go and pull this up. I'm not going to read every single page, but I want to give you guys an idea of what is on this test and just let you guys know you should totally get this test, especially if you don't know what's wrong with your body and you've been trying to figure it out and your doctors cannot figure it out. So when you get your result, basically what happens is you pay for the test. They're going to tell you to cut you know, your hair, a piece of your hair, which was in my first video, you can see um, when I was sending the results, the test out. So you basically just cut a little couple pieces of your hair, put it in a bag, mail it out, and then they will email you your results very quickly. So they emailed me back and it says your platinum test results are here. I'm going to read it off my iPad because I cannot print this. It's way too long. And then it just has my name with my redemption code and the date that I sent it out. And it says, you know, dear Shelly, we're delighted to present you with your test results. And then it just, you know, tells me to reach out to them if I have any further questions. Now, how they do this. Known allergy. Scenario one, it says, I'm going to read it to you guys. But just so you see, like, this is what they sent me. Scenario one, the item you're allergic to shows as a moderate or high reactivity item. This means that as well as a food allergy, you have a food sensitivity. If you already remove this item from your diet, you do not need to take any action. If you have not removed it previously, it is worth considering doing so. However, we would not recommend reintroduction following the elimination diet. So basically they're saying that if I have a moderate or high reactivity to whatever they list, that I should pretty much cut it out of my diet. And then scenario two is the item you're allergic to shows as a no reactivity item. This means you do not have a food sensitivity to this item. However, the results do not question or contradict the presence of your food allergy. Okay, so I'm going to keep scrolling until I get to my results. So basically, it says food analysis, food sensitivity analysis. Sorry, my ring light keeps like shining through. Um, so basically, anything in red, as you see down here, can you see this? Okay, it says high reactivity, moderate is orange, and then the uh, green is no reactivity. So you want to see more green than red and orange. So basically, my food sensitivities overview. So I have a high reactivity to all of these things. Look, like that's a lot, that's a long list, guys, to have a high reactivity to all of these things. That's a lot. Like, look at that. Let me see. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Shoot, three, four, three, five, twenty six. So twenty six. I'm so bad at math, guys. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I freaking hate math. So let's see because I don't want to count every single thing. So 26 plus 26, wait, what's going on? 26 plus 26, why is this doing this? Oh, 20, ugh. my phone is like tripping right now. Okay, so 26 plus 26 plus one, two, three, four, five. I have a high reactivity to 57 items, crazy. My moderate activity, so that's literally almost the same. So that one would be, so 50, one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, 57, 64, 54. And I have 53 moderate um, reactivities to stuff. That's a lot. So, basically, 57 plus 53, 110 different things. Like, literally, I have a reactivity to with food. Crazy. So, I'm going to tell you some of the things that they test for um, that came up in my high reactivity. Some of this stuff, I have no clue what it is. Like, this says red lee. Cester, L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's some sort of a liquor. I don't know. Um, vermouth, which is liquor. Turkey hen, turkey cock, um, which is crazy because I eat turkey meat all the time. Like literally, I don't eat pork. I don't eat fish. I rarely eat beef um, and I do eat chicken. But turkey is the main thing that I eat. And so I have noticed within definitely the past year for sure, maybe longer, 
like sometimes I eat turkey and it totally jacks up my stomach and so I kept thinking oh my husband's not cooking the meat completely and it's like raw or something and that's why I keep getting sick so I literally stopped eating the turkey meat my husband was making and so um, I would only eat it if I made it. And so sometimes I would make it and I'd be okay. And other times I'd make it and I wouldn't be okay. So then I came to the realization, what I thought was true, was that this turkey meat is just bad and we keep buying bad batches of it. That's what it must be. No, I have a food sensitivity to it and I just, my body can't break it down. So um, let's keep going on. Apples, literally every apple. Pink Lady Apples, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious Apples, Gala Apples, Fuji Apples, any apple. I love apples. I was eating those every single day. Apple juice and so forth. So basically, I'm, it's probably better off for me to tell you the things that I'm not sensitive to than what I am because it's so much. But literally everything that I eat, I have an issue with. Barley, bread, brown bread, granary bread, rye bread, white bread. Uh, bulgur wheat, noodles, like legitimately everything that I eat from the cereal. I, I can't have wheat, which is crazy because my doctor did do a gluten test for me, came back negative, but clearly everything I'm allergic to is basically gluten. Like if you think about it, like it's gluten. So even though it's saying I'm not allergic to gluten, my body is definitely reacting to the gluten and my body just can't process it. So this was a very hard for me to accept because all I eat, bread, pasta, um, cereal, which has a lot of wheat. Um, what else is in here? Oh, cheese. Can't have any freaking cheese. Cheddar cheese, mozzarella, Parmesan, um, soft cheese, whatever that means. Uh, dairy and eggs, butter, freaking sour cream, like my favorite, buttermilk, um, evaporated milk, ice cream, milk from cows, milk from goats, milk from sheep, yogurt, like all these things that I love to eat, my body cannot handle it. Can't have soy milk, can't have almond milk, which is what I've been drinking. So now I have to drink either coconut milk, rice milk, oat milk, or ripple milk. So I did a taste test of all those milks. Didn't really like any of them, but I settled with rice milk. And if rice milk's not available, I'll do the oat milk if I have to, because I love to eat cereal. Like if I didn't like cereal, I wouldn't care because that's the only thing I use milk for, but it is what it is. Crazy. Um, can't have apple juice. Can't have ale, beer, which is fine because I don't drink beer anyway. Um, hot chocolate. Um, soy milk, already did that one vermouth, peanut oil, cod liver oil, barley grass, no apples, which we already said, bananas. See, bananas I knew I was allergic to, but I found that out on my own because I ate a banana and my whole lip swelled up. Um, as far as I know, I'm allergic to raw fruits and vegetables. It never came up on my allergy test because again, they don't test for those things from my doctor's office, but I always have a reaction to it in my mouth. It feels sore. It's itchy. Um, my inside of my mouth swells up. So I've only been able to eat cooked fruit and cooked vegetables, except for mango. Mango I can eat, that's fine. So the fact that bananas came up, I figured that would come up because I know I'm allergic to that. Now, some things that didn't come up that said I wasn't reacting to was oranges, um, watermelon, cantaloupe, any melons. And I know that I'm allergic to them because again, my everything breaks out in my mouth. But what I will say is that it's been a few years since I've eaten those things because I know that I'm allergic to them. So this kind of does make me want to maybe try that out to see if I'm still allergic. But I'm waiting until I clear my system out of all this other stuff so I can fix my stomach. Um, what else was I allergic to? Liver, which I don't eat. So it says liver lamb, liver pig, pork, pork sausages, which is fine with me because I don't eat that. Um, goose, don't eat that. Um, walnuts, I already knew I was allergic to walnuts through my allergy tests. Oyster mushrooms, mushrooms, button mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, and shiitake mushrooms. So basically, no mushrooms for me. Which is crazy because I literally just started eating mushrooms recently. Can't eat those. Green beans, no green beans. Navy beans, don't know what that is. Chickpeas, edinami beans, I love edinami, can't have those. Soybeans and tofu. So basically what I was left with that was okay was um, blackberries, blueberries, kiwis, lemons, limes, chicken. Um, let's see. 
It says I could have um, mussels and shrimp, but I don't eat that stuff anyway, so it didn't matter. Broccoli, asparagus, like that is fine. Um, so that was most of my food allergies, which was like, that's crazy, because pretty much everything I eat I'm allergic to or have a food sensitivity to. And what was making it worse, I think, on my stomach is that Sometimes people still eat things they're allergic to or have a sensitivity to, which is okay because if you know, hey, if I drink milk, my stomach is going to be messed up. But you know that going in and you drink it anyway because maybe you want ice cream that day. Maybe you want a glass of milk. I don't know. But when you're constantly eating and drinking things that your body cannot break down or you're allergic to in multiple sittings, like if for breakfast, I'm eating cereal with milk and I can't eat cereal with milk. And then for lunch, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna have a turkey sandwich and I can't have the bread or the turkey. And then dinner, I'm like, hey, let's have some pasta with cheese. I literally ate a full day of stuff that my body can't handle, which is why I think my body was reacting the way that it was. So now I know, um, I feel like I'm not gonna cut ice cream out. I don't eat it all the time. I'll still eat it once in a while. But there are a lot of things that I'm gonna be modifying out of my diet. And um, that's just what I'm going to do. So my non-food sensitivities, so here's non-food sensitivities. So you see I have some stuff in my high reactivity and moderate reactivity. Not as many as I did in my food stuff, but um, some of this I already knew from my allergy test. I know I'm allergic to grass, but this breaks down what grass is. It says sweet vernal grass, uh, quack grass, couch grass, tall oat grass, perennial ryegrass, orchard grass, coxfoot grass, lilac, Kentucky bluegrass. So basically it's a whole bunch of grasses that it covers Bermuda grass, ash, I don't even know what ash is. Moderate reactivity, it says, I, I don't even know what this stuff is, but it says thistle, hawthorn, European beech, elm, dust, wasps, I'm allergic to wasps, like I had no idea. Blueberry, bees, I had no idea I would have a problem with bees. Ascaris, um, lupine, hop, storage mite, um, red fescue, tamarisk, tang seed, ragwood, ragwort. So I don't know what any of this stuff was except for it being a wasp. Oh, well, and a blueberry, obviously, an elm. But the, I didn't realize I was allergic to those things, so I'm glad that I know that I should not be around those things. Um, let's see, so what else? So then after that, it tells me, it gives you your metal sensitivities analysis which for me, let's see, it says high reactivity, no metals have been identified as high reactivity according to our test parameters, which is a great thing. I did have some moderate reactivity. Um, so it said argon, arsenic, cerium, cobalt, iridium, lead, palladium, rhenium, rubidium, and strontium. It says these metals have been identified as ones to which you should monitor your exposure to. It is recommended that you aid your body's natural detoxification processes by ensuring you drink plenty of filtered water, eat a diet in rich whole foods, particularly fruits and vegetables, avoid processed foods, reduce caffeine and alcohol intake, lower nicotine usage and exercise regularly. So the thing with metals is that that could literally be anything because they say there's metals like, um, it actually shows you right here. Metals are in our food, unfortunately, because of the pesticides and insecticides and herbicides that are used on crops. It says there's metal in our water, which is through the pipework that runs water through, um, the pipework that the water runs through. Um, that's why they say it's better to filter your water. Um, air, pollution from vehicles, such as cars, trains, aeroplanes, contributes to heavy metals. Cosmetics, so if you wear makeup, there's metal in that and everyday cleaning house products. So that's what it means when it says your reaction to metal. Like obviously it's not literally metal, but there's metal pretty much in everything. So that's good to know. Um, the next thing was mineral and other nutrient analysis of my sensitivities. So this says, um, so minerals are basically like your vitamins and your minerals, obviously. So this doesn't say that I'm sensitive to anything, but it says that it, it will tell you if you have stuff that's outside your range or within range. And so, as you see, the red is outside, the blue, green is in, within range. So everything was within range except for zinc, which I thought was weird because I do take zinc. Well, I mean, I don't take zinc every day. I do take it like if I'm feeling sick. Um, Genistein, I don't know what that is. Phosphorus, copper, chromium, and beta-carotene 
which makes sense because I think betel carotene is for your eyes and I'm blind at the bat. I wear contacts. Um, so I need to start taking a multivitamin, obviously. Everything else was within range, so that's good to know. Then they do an analysis of vitamins A through K, which is good to know, which is also vitamins. Um, red being outside range, green being within. So you see I have only three that was outside my range, which means that I don't have, it's, it's below the normal range. So I need vitamin B7, I need vitamin B12, and vitamin E, which are all important for your skin and your hair. So I'm definitely going to be looking into that something to take. The extra stuff I got was the gut health analysis because as I told you, my gut health is horrible. Like literally I'm always having stomach aches and all these problems. And what's crazy is that your gut health overview, they test to see how much healthy bacteria you have in your stomach because we all have bacteria in our stomach and you're supposed to have healthy gut bacteria. Um, and I don't know, it does something inside of you, I guess, when you're eating and it, you know, protects you from bad bacteria. My normal strains said I have no strains of bacteria in my stomach that are normal, which is crazy. Red flag. That's not normal to have zero, like literally zero, not even one strain, not two, not three. It was zero. So that totally made a lot of sense to me why my stomach is constantly having issues because I'm like, I have no good bacteria health in my stomach. That's crazy. So I have no, sh uh, I can't even pronounce these words, guys. It's strep streptococcus, streptococcus thermo, lactobacillus reuteri, bifidobacterium, bifidum, bacillus coagulans, and lactobacillus acidophilus. Maybe you guys can read it. Not good at pronouncing things, but literally zero gut health, which is crazy. I'm like, that's like totally unheard of. Then it tells you your additives analysis and it will tell you if you have a high reactivity, low or none. And so I do have a high reactivity to these things. As you see, there's one, two, three, six, seven, there's eight of them. It's just um, a bunch of letters and numbers. So it lists them here and then you can scroll down my moderate activity was more than that. Um, but when you scroll down at the very end, it breaks down each thing of those additives, which could be red dye, yellow dye, blue dye, um, anything that's an added um, thing in your food, which we shouldn't probably be eating anyway, but my body is sensitive to those things. Then it also has your digestion analysis, which again, my stomach, gut, health, which I always have problems with. And it tells you if you're low or normal in certain enzymes, in your digestive enzymes. And it said, I was normal for my pepsin and lapace enzyme, but I'm extremely low on my amylase, A-M-Y-L-A-S-E. Didn't know what that was, um, but come to find out when I went to my doctor and gave him all of this information, he said that means that my body is not, does not have any creon in it. And so, that is affecting my, um, oh, what was it? Oh, my pancreas, which I don't really know what that means, but he basically put me on a Creon medication temporarily to get this amylase back up to where it should be. And he also gave me a prescription strain probiotic to get all that good bacteria, gut health into my stomach, which I'm so thankful for. And he was even surprised because he was like, this is a great test because these things that I'm lacking, they would have never tested for because you have to have certain symptoms and for a certain while before they even think about testing for these things. And I guess I just wasn't a candidate to test for those things. And now we know, and I got that through this test. Now back to the additives I was telling you about at the very end of the test, they literally break down each letter number and tell you exactly what it is. So, you know, so just to give you an idea of what some of those additives could be that you might have a sensitivity to, it is, uh, I don't, I can't say all these words because they're like super big words, but um, basically all the added additives that are in foods, um, like this says as sulfame, I don't even know what that is, oh, like aspartame, aspartame, is that what, aspartame, aspartame, that's not a good thing. I think that's usually like in sugar-free stuff, diet stuff. Um, it says, let's see, I'm trying to find words that I could read. 
like red dye number two, um, amaranth, uh, carotene, mixed carotenes, beta carotenes, um, annatto, um, carmines, brilliant blue. So those are just like a couple things that are listed in additives, just so you guys get an idea like what additives are. So my consensus is this test has literally changed my life because now I know the things I'm allergic to or my body's sensitive to. My doctor was able to put me on some medication to fix the digestive health part. And so now I think I believe I got this, the results back about, like I said, two, three weeks ago, which means that I've been on the medication for about two, three weeks now. And I feel so much better now. I can eat and not have to run to the bathroom. Like I feel normal again. I have not taken Pepto-Bismol, so it's definitely helping my body. I have switched my milks over, like I said, from the almond milk to the oat and rice milk. Um, there are some things I still am eating, like I had hot dog yesterday, um, so I ate the bread. I did have mac and cheese the other day because my mother-in-law made it and it's so yummy um, and it was good. And I actually didn't really mess up my stomach like it normally would. And so my doctor did say that because I um, need to have Creon, which is what I've been taking, he said that some of those things that came back that I have um, a sensitivity to may no longer be because since I was lacking the Creon, it, um, it cannot break up wheat, um, sugars, um, carbs. Like my body has a hard time breaking that up. So with the Creon, it will help to break those things up. So for that part, I might be okay in the future to eat it and not have any issues once my Creon is up to where, like once it brings my levels back up to where it's supposed to be. Now you said as far as the dairy stuff, like that's just something, you know, if you have an allergy to it, you have an allergy to it, there's really nothing you can do about it. Maybe you'll grow out of it. I don't know, but I'm happy to know that hopefully after I finish the next three months of being on this Creon thing, hopefully I will be fine with eating my pasta and breads without an issue. We will see, I don't know, but I'm feeling so much better guys and you guys really should check this test out if you are looking for answers, if you're confused why you keep breaking out with eczema or rashes or you're itchy or whatever it is, definitely take this test because it literally changed my life. I think it'll change yours. I will put a link below on what it's called, where to get it. Again, always check Groupon or Google um, the name of this test to see if there's if they're selling it somewhere else cheaper even if they're not i 100 percent believe 200 dollars is worth this test is worth 200 dollars to pay for out of your pocket to find your answers and so what i'm going to do is in about six months um because i i have the creon medicine i'm supposed to take for the next three months um so i'm going to wait six months from today or well yeah from today and redo this test again just to see if anything has changed with my digestion issues, my di my digestive issues, and the way my body breaks down the wheat and the um, the carbs and the sugars and stuff to see if there's difference now that I'm on the proper medication and getting my body to reproduce these things that I need. So I probably will be doing an update in about six months to a year, we'll say. Um, and see what happens and I'll let you guys know but I'm really excited that I got my answers and I totally recommend this test to you guys and if you have any questions leave them down below I will happily answer them and I'll talk to you guys later